Lazarus. Um, here's what I'm going to show you. Um, just so that we can then talk about what are some of the things that we have to think about before we get before we get going along here. Uh, the back of the Lazarus has a radius. What is that radius? I don't have any idea. Um, but I know that when I begin applying pressure to the braces on the inside, that it's going to push that radius out to uh, whatever it is. Is it a 15 foot radius? Is it a 20 foot radius? I don't, I don't know. So I have to compensate for that. So let me show you this. I'm going to try to do this without inducing any sort of motion illness. There you can see the bottom of the Lazarus in the center is pushing on that brace. And if we move to this side, there is a gap. And if we move over to this side, there is a gap. And that's what we have to compensate for. So what uh, I am proposing to do is to um, cut, make a series of spacers that are going to ride right underneath the rim here so that when uh, the force is applied down onto these onto these areas um, there will be enough space there uh, so that the bottom will just barely touch or maybe not even touch um, the, uh, uh, the support underneath there. So that way we have freedom of movement of the back to go to the radius whatever that radius is when the brace is pushed down on that. So that's really the first order uh, of business this morning. Um, but we'll have to wait a little bit because I kind of have a time area where I don't run band saws and, and uh, routers and stuff in the neighborhood because I am the courteous neighbor. Not everyone's like that. Yeah, they're pretty good in my neighborhood. Well, at least this neighborhood, they are. Um, so we do have uh, some other things that we can get done. Uh, so stand by and I'm going to go to I'll probably make another cup of coffee. You should. There's a video on it. It's like, I'll put the link. I'll put it right there. It's a killer video. All right, here are the spacers we're going to use. It's nothing fancy at all. It's some scrap wood. I want to say this was on a, from a wooden crate, like a display crate that somebody gave us that had like syrup in it or something, I think. I don't know. It's just scrap wood, and then this is just um, peel and stick cork. Uh, so that we don't mar the finish up on uh, this or any future instruments. And now we got to kind of finagle it into that little space there. All right, I've gotten the first set of spacer blocks in, and you can see how I'm able to allow that back to be moved into the shape that it wants to be into with the brace pressed all the way down. Now, something that I get to do is I've only made one of these. This is a shaped uh, clamping call and uh, that fits the slope of the brace like you see right there. So, now I'm going to go make five more of those. Um, because that's kind of what happens. I tend to make, uh, it almost seems like I spend more time making things to fix things than I spend fixing things, but <sighs> such is life. So, off to the pan saw again. 
Hey, welcome back, folks. Um, all right, the testing continues with this funky, totally untried technology. Um, all right, I have cut a series of these little clamping calls. C A U L S is my understanding. Um, I have my um, wooden spacers underneath here um, lined with cork on the top and I've done a uh, just a dry press fitting to kind of see um, what's the deal and where um, I may have some issues uh, this actually looks pretty good this one actually looks pretty good this one looks I have a little bit of light seeping through here but I've not cleaned this underneath this brace I've not done any glue removal on this I just kind of clamped it down where it is so that's okie dokie um, and here's where I have to I, if you know anything about this let me know um, because I think this is going to be rearing its head more and more um, this is a if you want to use a fancy term, laminate body, um, which is synonymous with the word plywood. Um, and because of the scarcity of tone woods, um, more and more um, guitars are being made with plywood or laminate or high pressure laminate or whatever you want to call it. Thin pieces of wood somehow held together um, instead of a single solid piece of wood. Um, so that's one of the reasons I'm not just the easy thing to do, tear the back off, put a new back on it, be done. Um, but I want to figure this out because I think this is going to be coming, going to be seen more and more in the future are these delamination types of, um, uh, of repairs just because we're going to be seeing more and more of these um, so when this brace gets pushed down there's some loose ply right here and then there's still some loose kind of bumpy ply right here and then there's I've got a piece missing right there there's a section missing on this right here um, and I'm currently at a quandary as what to do. Um, Mr. Ford, who is uh, the, the authority on all things that have frets on them for the most part, um, has said that he, um, that he uses super glue on these, that he will just literally flood the area with uh, water thin super glue and let that set up. Um, and then work from there um, and I have no doubt that that's probably the way that, to do it and that's probably gonna be the way that I'm going to do it but right now I'm just sitting scratching my head about all of this because when I close the ends of the braces up that does tighten this part of the plywood down but from what I can see underneath here and I'm not even going to try to flip this over because that would be a freaking disaster um, but from what I can tell that is going to open up it opens up a little bit in the back but <sighs> You know that's going to be that's going to be the price to pay. I think um, because we want the sides and we want the back. We want those to be rigid um, to reflect the sound off of the soundboard. Um, contributing tone, yes. Determining tone, uh, I don't think so much. I could be wrong. You know, I wish more people would say that. Um, because uh, 
I've seen some stuff out there and I go, I don't think that's right. Um, but, uh, but I will tell you that, uh, that uh, I can be wrong, I have been wrong, um, and I learn from it and I change things. So um, I think that's, I think that's kind of where we're at. Um, uh, I'm going to now, as painful as it's going to be, I'm going to disassemble all of this and then I'm going to clean this glue joint up uh, and then I'm going to, as much as I can, get the inside of this guitar cleaned up um, because there's still some goo in here. There's still, like over here, um, you can still see the high water mark here. Let's do this just because it's fun. There is one clamping call. There is another, and you can see that brown horizontal line right there. That's the watermark. And it goes all the way down there. And it goes all the way down there. So that's where that guitar sat at an angle for some period of time. I don't know how long. Um, with a bunch of water inside of it. So there is the, the calls clamped down. And let's go back here. And now that is going to be my big problem area. Um, for glue. And I think it's going to be super glue. I think it's going to be that water thin super glue that as much trouble as I'm going to get into, I'm probably going to go up to, um, I got a hobby town up in Vacaville that carries it. And I think that's the closest one. Um, so there we are. That's, um, that's kind of what's going on. And, um, The learning curve continues to be about like that, but <laughs> I'm clawing my way up. So check back, we'll, uh, we'll have some sort of progress, good, bad, or indifferent.